Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to pass the mic. We only have one microphone. Um, so time is tight today. So candidates, you will have a two-minute opening statement. Uh, when I ask you questions, you will either have, I will tell you you have a minute or two minutes to answer, and then a one-minute closing statement. So Dan, let's start with you. Hey everybody, Dan Cox. I'm honored to be here today. I'm running to be your next governor. I have the privilege of just coming back from Mar-a-Lago meeting with our president, 45, Donald J. Trump. He sends his regards to Maryland. He called me in for a special one-hour meeting just with him. We had a great talk. He wants to see freedom restored. I am running to restore freedom in Maryland, make sure we audit the 2020 election, make sure we have paper ballots and hand counting, make sure we stop the sanctuary state catch and release program being done right now. We're one of three states doing it. It's a total danger to our families, to families like mine with 10 kids, my wife and I. We must create safety by making sure we back the blue, but also ending this kind of illegal stuff that's being done right now through trafficking that's being done on the watch of our Republican governor. That's a shame. I'm going to change that. We're going to make sure that once again, once again, our schools are teaching reading and write, writing and arithmetic and STEM materials and not this crazy sexual indoctrination and CRT. We're going to eliminate that. And we're also we're going to make sure we teach the Constitution so we end this Antifa crap. We've got to make sure our flag is respected once again. We are the greatest country on earth. We're going to make sure we keep it that way. I'm asking for your vote on July 19th. You can go to coxforfreedom.com and uh, learn all about me. Thanks so much. Great. So uh, one thing I did want to point out, and I apologize for interrupting, but Judith right here, she's our timekeeper. The vanilla envelope means you have 15 seconds left. The red envelope means you're done, and I'm going to grab the microphone for you. So don't make me grab the microphone for you all. And everyone, um, since we are here to focus on the candidates, if you could, please take any side conversations outside. I know there's a ton of candidates here that really want to talk to you and get to know you. So, you know, we have the porch open. So uh, please, be, uh, please be kind to our candidates that have come a long way to see us. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Robin running for governor. I'm the only candidate for governor in either party who's going to give you a tax cut, a one-third tax cut of the state sales tax, two cents, equals $780 a year per household fiscal stimulus, not one year, each and every year. So you're going to have that money in your pocket. No, no one else has been able to give you a tax cut. No one else will. I shall. That's a promise. What will that tax cut do? It will, it'll be the first state ever to cut its sales tax, we will. But it'll act as a lure, a lure. When you go fishing, you have to have a crab or a worm on your hook. It'll act as a lure for the big businesses to locate their well-paying jobs in Maryland and I'm gonna have a job strike force that's in the air within one hour of hearing that these big companies are expanding in multi-billion dollar expansions to go out there and convince them to bring the well-paying jobs to Maryland. What happened two days ago? What'd you hear two days ago? Boeing, Boeing is bringing their national headquarters, not to BWI, not to St. Mary's County, to Northern Virginia. Same thing Amazon did. 25,000 jobs averaging $155,000 each. Northern Virginia, not Maryland. And guess where the Washington football team may end up? Northern Virginia. What's wrong with our state? What's wrong with our State Department of Commerce? Facebook, have you heard of that? Just signed the largest lease in Austin, Texas history. Why not Maryland? Apple just located a billion dollar campus with 3,000 jobs averaging 188,000 each in North Carolina, not Maryland. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm David Lasher and I'm a libertarian candidate for, for governor. Let me tell you just 
to introduce myself. I'm here to meet you, listen, learn. I am an IT executive. I uh, have experience in federal and state government. I live in Annapolis with my wife and daughter. My wife uh, has spent her career in environmental protection and natural resources. And the reason that I'm running for governor is because I feel that our liberties in this country and in the West are at more jeopardy than they've been in since the foundation of this country. I'm, all, I'm also, though, and I, I, I would expect there to be a lot of accord on that view in this audience, but I am also running uh, as a libertarian because I want to offer a choice, an alternative to those in Maryland who have not been happy with what they've been seeing and getting from the Republicans and the Democrats for the last decade or more. So a lot of overlap with libertarians and, and Republicans, but also a lot of overlap between libertarians and Democrats. I want to close with my three, three themes and then uh, enjoy the rest of the conversation and take the questions. My themes are opportunity for all Marylanders, accountability from all Marylanders, especially authorities, and civility towards all fellow Marylanders. I look forward to questions on specific issues. Right. Thank you. Great, so if you have any questions, be sure you raise those uh, cards in the air, and Greg right here will come around and uh, look for them. But uh, the first question we want them to answer is what is the most pressing issue you will address in St. Mary's County, and what is it for Maryland? David, we'll start with you. Well, I, I think it's the same press, the same issue is Maryland-wide for me. And that issue is the divisiveness that we're seeing in politics in Maryland and America today. The angels versus demons kind of politics that, that frankly, both sides are, are practicing. Uh, my commitment, uh, my personality, my history is I will work with party, I will work with all individuals of, of goodwill to accomplish good things for the county and for the state. A, a quick example would be when I, I did work for Governor Hogan uh, before I left the Republican Party circa 2017, and I was at the Department of Health. And there was a problem with the orders of individuals to re by the courts to receive services for mental illness or substance use disorders. This was a 30 year problem. Working with the secretary, uh, I, Secretary Schrader, we work with the Democrats and Republicans in the judiciary to get good things done. Thank you. I, I do want to point out that Robin Ficker, that's myself, is the only person with an honorable discharge from the United States Armed Forces running for governor on the Republican ticket. I'm also the only farmer, do you have any farming down here in St. Mary's County? The only farmer who actually owns a tractor and has an active farm in the race for governor. I think that our tax cut, it'd be $780 a year per household, but more than that, it acts as a lure so we can bring some of these big businesses in. You've heard of Microsoft? Microsoft has 53,000 square feet of space in Maryland. They just signed the agreement to build an additional 250,000 square feet in Northern Virginia. They almost, they have almost 3 million there now and 500,000 additional square feet in Atlanta. We're gonna bring business in and jobs, my favorite four letter word. So, first of all, I think that if we don't have a constitution that is actually followed by our elected leaders, we don't have a government. Yes. That's the most important thing in facing us. And why is that necessary? Because that's what's causing the lack of following the Constitution is causing the catch and release program into our communities, making them more dangerous. That, that you know, refusal to follow the Constitution has locked down our churches for the first time in 400 years while you could go to liquor stores and you could go to Walmart and you could do lots of other things. You couldn't even run your own business for 50% of businesses in Maryland. How in the world 
is uh, bringing big, you know, big international corporations here going to help our small businesses if we're locking them down. I'm all for businesses all the above, but we've got to make sure our small businesses have tax relief. I want to reduce the property taxes, make sure that our small businesses are never again shuttered by illegal executive orders. Pitch to libertarian voters. Robin, we'll start with you. Pitch to libertarian voters? Yes, sir. Well, if, if you're a true libertarian voter, then you might vote for my esteemed opponent, who's a pretty right, bright guy. But if you're voting in the Republican primary, if you're registered as a libertarian, you can't vote in the Republican primary. I would just say to the independent libertarian voters, if you're considering voting for Robin, Two and a half million Marylanders already have voted for Robin. I have placed 25 questions on the ballot in the largest county of the state, which received two and a half million votes, including approving term limits over the opposition of every Democrat. We got 70%, including a limit on property tax increases and keeping sewage sludge trenching and garbage dumps out of residential zones. So you've already voted for peaceful change and Robin. Thank you. So I would urge libertarians to realize that freedom-loving Republicans is the only way to stop Democrats in this state. Consider the fact that if we don't return Matt Morgan to the legislature and Deb Ray, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have socialism shoved down your throat. That's the facts. But we have an opportunity. This is a red wave here like none other. And if you choose America First Republicans, people that will stand with you on the Republican platform that says, yes, why do we love liberty? We love it because of law. We love it because of the Constitution. We love it because these are the principles which bind all of us. And that's the kind of Republican Party we need to have. But the problem that we're facing in the Republican Party is a lot of times we have people that are not liberty-minded. But the answer is not to go and vote libertarian. The answer, as much as I love libertarian principles in, in large part, with the answer is freedom. The answer is a Republican platform that we all believe in. That's the path forward, and that's why I'm asking for your vote, because with a constitution in play, enforced, we're going to have our freedoms back. So is this a quick question for me? <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it short. I, I, you know, libertarians is, is a big tech kind of thing, like lots of different types of libertarians. Not all libertarians are bringing to uh, a, a candidacy the kind of accomplishment and record that I'm bringing, and not all of them are as civil in their demeanor as I tend to be. So that would be my pitch to my own libertarians. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you'll have um, two minutes to answer this next question. COVID presented a unique problem for government at all levels. What we know now, how will you approach the next pandemic? We'll start with Dan. We're going to approach it with freedom. Yes. Never again are we going to lock down our state. Never again are we going to force mask our kids five years old and up under the penalty of crime. Never again are we going to uh, have an, an order to stay in our homes. You know, I was threatened that if I left my home to speak against the illegal, unconstitutional orders to not assemble, that I would be arrested. I had to get a federal judge to tell our governor, through the attorney general who was representing him, that that was inappropriate, okay? Now, I believe that's inappropriate for all of us, not just because of elected officials having the right to speak, but because you, we the people, have the right to speak. So how we handle you know, any further issues with this uh, pandemic or pandemic or however you want to call it, yes, it's a problem. Anytime we have an issue, do we have an issue? No, okay. All right, I just want to make sure that we didn't need an am ambulance no. or something. Okay. How we handle it? Can I get an extra couple seconds? Sure. <laughs> Time's up. How, how we handle this in the future? 
The path forward is the Republican path forward. We have not followed a Republican path in Maryland. Look to Florida, look to South Dakota, look to Missouri, look to these states with Republican leadership that said, we will not shutter our states, we're gonna make sure we stay open, and guess what? The death rates were lower in those states. Maryland has, according to the Wall Street Journal, we are at the bottom five of all states for economic, health, and constitutional freedoms for COVID lockdowns. The bottom five. We're up there with New York, okay? Florida, which has 20 million people. Maryland only has 6 million. Florida has a much lower death rate, a huge recovery rate. If you go there now, it's, it's going you know, bonkers for business. That's the path forward that we will take. If you want to deal with the next <coughs> proposed shutdown, then put Chris Palombi, stand up Chris, in Congress instead of that guy that's got plenty of youth and inexperienced Steny Hoyer. <laughs> we need Chris down there instead of shut down Steny. Maryland ranked the lowest. It ranked the very lowest. It had the highest percentage of students in the state, of any state, students who were not participating in actual physical non-virtual learning we had the highest percentage of students of all the states we had a million and a half people seeking unemployment tens of thousands of businesses closed i attended the first open maryland rally in annapolis in april of 2020 and then in the third rally was also was there for the second and third the third one was in July of 2020, and I was the only speaker then at that rally that called for the opening of schools in September of 2020. The little kids were not getting the virus. They weren't transmitting it. They should have had the focus on the senior living centers where the deaths were occurring, but they weren't even publishing the addresses of the deaths. If they had been, they would have seen these senior conglomerations. We can't close the schools. Parents have to have a big say in what is going on in the schools, what's being taught, what, what the kids are being told to do, and certainly parents should be able to veto any mandate for their child, that's for sure. So, Robin for governor, I'm going to represent you folks in St. Mary's County because after all, I come down here all the time and have for years. Thank you. You'll be hearing no different points of view from the libertarian in the room here and the libertarian candidate. I just want to build on it by saying that uh, what I would want to do to prevent a repeat of what we experienced in the recent pandemic, uh, first, first day in office, if elected governor, put forward a bill to remove the ability for the executive to declare a health emergency and thereby assume emergency power. That has to happen. And then I'd also, on, on a how and the particulars, I, I work at the Department of Health, right? I don't know if you all know that every county has a health officer, right, that is jointly, jointly, uh, joint, jointly appointed by the Department of Health and, and the county executive. The other thing that I would do on my first day in office is undertake a review of all Maryland health officers to see whether they were fact-based in their responses and their messages in regard to this pandemic. Yes. I don't expect many would retain their jobs. Uh, that's all. Hello, thank you for having me here. I'm Joseph Warner, I'm running for governor. Um, talk about the pandemic, I, I can tell you what I know from first-hand experience. I'm a small business owner. My wife and I have two little businesses in Baltimore County. The shutdown, they shut us down, but we kept paying rent. It just about destroyed our business. There's a lot of, we have older people, she does nails. You think, oh, it's nothing to force them out. You can't believe how that hurts the people. When they finally can come back, they're like, oh, I really enjoy this. This is making my life seem normal. A lot of elderly people go to the salon just to talk to people and they get out and get the nails done. Mm -hmm. I thought the whole pandemic and the whole lockdown was nothing more than a political ploy to gain power, which it did kind of work. We got Biden now thanks to the pandemic. We have more control taken of our lives. 
And this is another reason we need voucher schools. When I say voucher schools, is because the unions have so much power. The unions have controlled the politicians into shutting down schools. We have more children committing suicide now than ever before. That's crazy. It's all because of this pandemic. You never hear about that. You don't hear about the lockdowns killing all these innocent people. You don't hear about all the older people who are you know, in these older homes, old age homes. They should have been sequestered. They should have been looked after. And same with these mandatory vaccines. We know what it's doing to us. We know now there's a lot of health issues with these mandatory vaccines. I would say if you want to get vaccinated, you should get vaccinated. If you don't want to, you shouldn't have to. Now we find out vaccinated people still pass around the disease. I would not have mandatory vaccines. I would not have mandatory lockdowns. I would not close the schools. Because that's crazy what we did to each other this time. I did not hurt my children. They have anxiety and depression, and then they had to go back. I would never do that. Look at DeSantis in Florida. They did a lot better than we did. Look at New York. Look at all the deaths that went on in New York. I would not have a lockdown. And that's one thing I'll guarantee you as governor. There will be no more lockdowns, no more mandatory vaccines. And, and I will take you through what happened, a total exposure, what happened. Look through it all and make sure to see who did what and make them accountable for what happened. So I hope you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And now we'll have closing remarks. Um, Mayor Gordon, we're having a one-minute closing statement. So actually, David, we'll start with you. Again, the reason I decided to stand for office is it goes back to the mandates again. And what triggered me, what clicked in my brain, was when Larry Bogan, in the fall of 2020, said, we don't have a constitutional right not to wear a mask. Do you remember that? You remember that? And then that fall, he was, he was saying that if you left the state, he was threatening, if you left the state, right, for Thanksgiving holiday, he was threatening not to let you back in. I'm running for office because, like I sense from everybody in this room, I'm liberty oriented. I think it is in dire jeopardy. And I am trying to reach out to, I am trying to reach out, connect with, and, and engage those who aren't as liberty-minded and, and bring them to, to, to our side. Be effective for, for liberty in Maryland, and I appreciate you having me here and listening to me uh, today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I'm back kind of quickly. Um, again, I want to thank you all for having me here, and my biggest thing is to keep freedom in a free state where, you know, I can't believe that we had a governor that was a Republican and he handled the thing just like every other Democrat. He handled it no different than right. you would handle it in New Jersey. I, you know, that was very upsetting. And I, I would not do that. And I feel that I'm the person that can carry the message that the Republicans have. I can carry the freedom and, and liberty message and still win the, the general election. We're going to be running against someone who's going to be an extreme leftist. I mean, Rancho used to be a leftist. Now, my guy can turn what's out there. So any Republican that goes through this primary will be much better than any Democrat. Because God knows we're getting some really bad. And then come out of the state between Perez and all the others. But I really do believe I can carry our message and I can carry it through to victory. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you. It's very important for candidates to show up. Half a life is showing up. Very important to participate in debates because that means the voters can make an informed choice. So I urge you to look at the candidates who showed up here today and indeed who are going to debates, who are participating in forums and are not disrespecting the voters by not showing up. If you give me a mandate, it won't be my mandate, it'll be our mandate, the people's mandate, and despite the Democratic majority, we will get that sales tax cut through, $1.75 billion a year. The President of the Senate and the House of Delegates leader will not be able to stop it because it'll be the people's mandate. They have that surplus, they want to spend it. They want to spend it on their pet projects. They haven't even told us what they are yet because the election hasn't come up. 
Nice to be here in St. Mary's County. You folks are wonderful. Red Wave. Do you, want people, do you want people at the top of the ticket who are going to stand with your values to fight for you as I've been privileged to do in Annapolis with people like Delegate Morgan and looking forward to seeing Deb Ray come back? This is the issue in front of us. Are we going to elect people who instead, like my opponent, doesn't show up and also chose the non-essentialist to lock us down and also said wear the damn mask or else you get arrested five years old enough? also supports the trafficking through the illegal catch and release sanctuary state program going on with the Biden administration right now. That's what we're up against. And I've been told that there are people who've been offered money to pay to run against me to split the vote so my opponent can come out on top. But I believe people are smarter. When I sat with President Trump this week, I was so honored. I thought, my goodness, I'm a nobody. He had called me in his office and he sat there and he said, Dan, I want you to know something. This is straight from him. He said, Maryland matters like every other state in this country matters because the country is at stake. Yeah. So, Dan, you got to win this. Go out and fight. Fight for our American first values. Make sure the people know that the President of the United States, 45, wants them to elect you to run that ticket and run that flag through November. And I can win in November. And I will win in November with your help. Thank you. Yeah.